All right, so this is going to be Elite Code question 66 called plus one. Um, so in this question, we're given a non-empty array of digits representing one single integer, and we're just trying to add one to the integer. Um, so in the example here, this would be like the number 123, and to add one to that, we'd get 124, but it's represented in an array where um, each digit is like a single element in the array. Um, so to think about solving a question like this, um, where it's pretty simple, like there's just one manipulation um, happening, and really a lot of questions, I think it's good to like break it down into the different cases that we could be dealing with. So for this question, the first kind of case that we could encounter is where it'll just be a simple addition um, where all we have to do is increment the last element by one. So if this was our example integer, you can see all you have to do is increment the last integer in the array by one. Um, in the second case, however, we can see if it ends in a nine, then this actually needs to be changed to a zero. Um, so what we can do is just check that if this last one is a nine, let's just change it to a zero and then we move on to the next integer and do the same thing. Um, and then once we encounter an integer that is not nine, then we can increment that one by one. And then finally, if it's the case where we get to the first integer in the array and it's still equal to nine, then instead of changing this to zero, all we have to do is change it to one and then we can push another zero back to the end of the array. Um, and then that would give us the full number because if a number is all nines, it'll always end up being a one followed by however many zeros. Okay, so to actually code this, we're gonna start with an index or like an iterator value and it'll start at the um, last element in the array since um, that's going to be like the least significant digit. And then we can handle the first case first, case one, um, and just check if um, digits i is not equal to nine, then all we have to do is increment that last one. So digits i plus plus, and then we can actually just return digits right here, because if it's this case, we're already done. Um, and then the next thing we can do is handle the case where um, we find a nine at the end, and I'm gonna do a while loop here, um, oops. because we're gonna wanna keep checking that last index as long as we keep encountering nines. So. Um, we'll set it to zero if it's a nine, Whoops. and then decrement our iterator. And then to handle the third case, we're going to work within this while loop still, and we'll just add another check for if we're on the first number or the first like index in our array. So if i is equal to zero then we'll actually change it to a one. So digits i equals one. And then again, we have to push back a zero since our array is gonna grow by one. And then here we would be done because we've already encountered um, every digit and handled the cases. So we can return digits. Um, and then finally, after this while loop, if um, all we did was change numbers to zero um, and then we broke out because we um, encountered one that was not a nine, then we'll just increment that last one that we saw. So digits i plus plus again, and then we can return digits. Um, so since we broke this down into the three cases, and we handled each of the cases, hopefully correctly, this should work.
and it does. So for the space and time complexity, um, we're not, um, I don't believe, storing anything yet. So the only data structure being stored is just this digits, which we're already given. So we can just say our space complexity is constant. And then for time complexity, we can start with this first check. Um, so we're just checking if the last number is 9, incrementing, and returning. Um, so those are all constant operations. Then within this while loop, um, again, these are all constant operations, um, just doing checks or pushing back, um, incrementing. Um, however, we are looping through each of the digits. So it is going to be a linear time. So O of n, where n is equal to the number of digits in our array for the time complexity. All right. Um, I hope that this video was helpful for you guys, and thank you for watching.